Hey everyone, Brady from texturelabs.org here, and today I'm gonna to run through a pretty easy tutorial to create this cast shadow for text in Photoshop. It's a nice technique to have in your back pocket because whether you're going for this or this or this, it's all basically the same approach. And people have been making cast shadows in Photoshop since ancient times by making 100 or 200 copies of a layer, which can be a little bit of a pain in the wouldn't it be nice if you could create a cast shadow with just the click of a single button? Well, that's what we're gonna do in this tutorial is make an automatic cast shadow. We're gonna do it using something called Photoshop Actions. And you may or may not have used Actions before. If not, nothing to fear. It's a pretty easy setup. And once we're done, you'll be able to click a button and create a cast shadow anytime you want for the rest of your life, honestly. <laughs> All right, so I've got a new document going here with a black background and some live type. I'm working, by the way, at HD resolution 1920 by 1080, but this will work at any resolution. And I'm actually gonna create a solid fill color for the background instead, just so I can experiment with a little bit of color. That's not part of the tutorial necessarily, I just want a little color back there. All right, and I will delete that original background. So first thing I wanna do is go up here in my Windows menu and open my Actions tab. And you can see there's a folder in here called Default Actions. I actually do like to just close that folder up and click on the little folder icon to create a new folder to keep my own actions in, and I will call it Custom Actions. Then I can create a new action with the little plus icon here, but before I do that, I wanna make sure that I've selected the layer that I wanna create the cast shadow on, this retro text layer. So now I can hit the plus icon to get started on a new action. I'll call this Cast Shadow and I will hit the record button. So now you can see this little red light is on, meaning Photoshop will be recording any commands I make until I hit the stop button. And what I'm gonna do is run through a specific set of commands. It's almost gonna be like a cheat code in a video game. I'm gonna power through these specific steps, but I'll also list them in the description below. I think that'll be a little easier to reference if you wanna create this action on your own. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is command or control click on the layer icon of the current layer to make a selection in the shape of that text. Then I'm gonna hit the plus button down here to create a new layer. I wanna fill that with black, so I'll hit D to set my colors to default, then Alt or Option Delete to fill with the foreground color or black. Command or control D to deselect, and next I'll use command or control and the open bracket key to move that layer down one spot. I'll press V for the move tool, and I'm gonna zoom way in here so you can see. I'm gonna press the arrow key once down and once to the left. Then I'll hit Command or Control J to duplicate this layer, Command or Control open bracket to move it down a spot, then one arrow down and one to the left. There's a little bit of hard labor here. I'm gonna do that same, make a copy, move it down, move it over, and I'm gonna repeat it eight times. Command or Control J to duplicate, Command or Control open bracket to move it down a spot, then one arrow key down and one arrow key to the left. Seven more of those. Let's see if I can do it in seven seconds. And I know I am literally doing the exact thing I said I was trying to avoid, making these copies by hand, but this is the last time I will ever have to do it. So there we go. All right, so I have my original layer and a total of 10 copies. And I'm gonna select all of these layers using the keyboard command, Alt or Option, plus the Shift key, plus the close bracket key, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. Command or control E to merge those into one layer. And finally, I'll double click that layer and rename it Shadow. All right, that's it, that's a full day's work. I'm gonna hit the stop button. And let me collapse this menu down and let's take this action for a test drive. And before I do that, please do consider hitting the like button. Better to do that now because what if I try out this action and it doesn't do anything at all? although I think it is gonna work. Uh, also, I love making these tutorials for you guys, but it actually helps if I know a little bit about you. So leave me a comment below. Are you a student? Are you a designer? I'd love to know what kind of stuff you guys are making. And there's a pretty good chance my mom will leave a comment too. So see if you can guess which comment it is. All right, back to business. Let's try out this action. I'm gonna delete that shadow as though we're starting from scratch. And if I have this text layer selected, and up here in the Actions tab, I have the Cast Shadow action selected. I'm gonna hit the Play button, and there you go, a nice little Cast Shadow. Hit it again, you get a longer shadow, and if you wanna go crazy, you can just keep hitting that button and the shadow will get longer and longer. It does create one new layer every time I play that action, but I can hold Shift and select all these layers, then use Command or Control E to merge those into one layer. 
So now you've got your cast shadow action and Photoshop does save these actions. So next time you open the program, you'll always have this action to create a cast shadow. Maybe that's all you were looking to learn, but don't stop the video just yet. I think this is a good spot to throw in a few tips that I use all the time to give this kind of a cool vintage look. What I like to do is command or control click on the top text layers icon to make a selection in the shape of the text. Then I'll hide that layer for a moment and I'm gonna select the shadow layer and just hit delete to punch a hole out of that shadow. And if I turn the top layer back on and then one of these two layers, I'm gonna use command T or control T to transform and actually rotate and offset it just a little bit. I think a little bit of misalignment gives it more of a hand painted or old fashioned printed look especially if I distress the edges of these two layers. If you've watched any of my other tutorials, you probably know how I like to do this. I'm gonna command or control click on the shape of that top text layer, then I'll turn it off, and here in the fill and adjustment layers menu, create a solid color, and let's go with something bright. Then let me do the same thing for the shadow. I'll command or control click, turn off the original, create a solid, maybe not 100% black, but kind of a softer black, and now I can manipulate the masks to give these letters more character. So with that mask selected, I'm gonna to go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Then here in the Brush Strokes section, I'll use Spatter. Maybe set that to 10 and 15, okay. Then in the Properties tab for the mask, I'm gonna hit the Select and Mask button. And in Global Refinements down here, I can smooth it out and bring up the contrast and that'll kind of mush things together in a way that looks like printed ink. Okay, so same thing on the cast shadow. I'll just use the most recent filter, filter gallery, then select and mask, and smooth that out a little bit, bring up the contrast, okay. So the channel is called Texture Labs, why not a little texture? I'll copy this paper 151 and paste it right on top. And here's a blending technique I've been using all the time lately. In the filter other section, if I use the high pass filter, and you can generally use this to zero in on the finer details of a texture, but if I crank the value way up to 200 or so, it doesn't change the overall character of the image much, but it does spit out an image that has an average value of 50% gray. If I pull up a levels adjustment, you can see that in the histogram, most of the values in this image are now gray. And that works really well for the blending modes down in the contrast section down here. I'm kind of digging the way this looks set to linear light mode. And that is looking pretty cool. All right, well, that's it. That's all I've got for you today. I hope you guys find this technique useful. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave me a comment. Uh, I've always got new tutorials like this on the way, so hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.